Welcome students, it's another session of Darasa Online. We have our chemistry today and your teacher is Mr. Kenneth Kaunda. Now the last time we introduced the topic of air combustion, rusting and firefighting and looked at the composition of air. Now today we are going to be looking at combustion. Now at the end of the lesson today I expect that a good number of us will be able to answer questions that are talking about combustion. Now when we talk about combustion we mean burning of items in, in air or in oxygen. Now there are a number of applications also of combustion in our daily lives at home, in the schools, in the industries. We have a number of applications. Now at the end of the lesson also today, we shall be able to answer questions that are asking us about application of combustion in the schools, in the at homes, in the hospitals, anywhere. But it's combustion. Welcome to this session. Now, students, let's ask ourselves the meaning of the word combustion. Now, a number of times we confuse combustion with burning. But sometimes also we use those two words interchangeably. When you say you're combusting something, it's at the same time could mean you are burning something. But today, at the end of this lesson, we'll try to see a very small difference between combustion and burning. Now, what is combustion? Now, when you take a piece of paper, and then you light it, you'll see it burning. Now, sometimes something can be burning, yet you're not seeing any kind of fire or any kind of flame. So you can be able to see as burning is setting something on fire, but at the same time, combusting is setting something on fire, but you're not, you may not be able to see that fire. But you can say it is burning. So it, it can be possible that combustion is burning, but can also be, to some extent, different from burning in a little and a little way. So let's try to define the term combustion. So students, combustion is the process by which substances, especially fuels, because something can be burning is a fuel, that they combine with gases, for example, oxygen, chlorine, or bromine vapor. Now, when you talk about this oxygen, chlorine, and bromine vapor, we mean gases. Now, when you talk about combining, means we are trying to combine a particular substance, which now we are calling as a fuel, plus some kind of gas. So it means that for combustion to take place, one of the reactants must be exactly a gas in nature. So one of the reactants must be a gas. For example, if you have a fuel, for example petrol, and you want to combust it, there's no way you can combust it without oxygen. We expect that oxygen is a gas. So it's a, a combination of petrol and oxygen which will give us the 
process of combustion. Now, when substance combusts, or when substance burns in oxygen or in air, or when these substances combine with the gas, now we form particular products. Now, the products of combustion normally are hot gases. Now, these hot gases, we see them as flames. So whenever you see a flame somewhere, remember, it is because a particular substance, whether it is a fuel or anything, is combining with a gas to produce that hot gas, which is called a flame. So the product of combustion is a mixture of hot gases, which we see as a flame. Now, when we talk about combustion, where a particular fuel or substance combining with oxygen or combining with any gas to give us the products, and the products as a flame, sometimes you might think that when you light a piece of paper or a piece of wood and then you see fire, that one is combustion. There's a very thin difference between combustion and burning. Now, when you see something burning, you can see the flame, the fire. But sometimes something can be combusting, yet you're not seeing. But you know it is combusting. It means the, the, word, the term combustion and the burning can be used interchangeably, only that there's a thin difference between the two. Now let's look at briefly uh, some examples which can give a very small difference between burning and combustion. The first obvious difference between burning and combustion is that burning is just setting something on fire. Burning is just setting a substance on fire. You have a matchstick, light it on a piece of paper, that is burning. Now combustion is more than just burning, but you, could, you can say it is a chemical reaction whereby there's some kind of addition of oxygen to a particular substance called, we say it is addition of or a combination of a fuel or a substance with gas, which is oxygen now. So if we combust something in oxygen, then it's a chemical reaction that is trying to give us a way of seeing the combination of oxygen to those substances, which is normally oxidation reaction. So combustion is a chemical reaction. In which the substances, e.g. fuels, for example fuels, are oxidized. Oxidized means, oxidized means oxygen is added to them. So this is a chemical reaction in which oxidation takes place and then burning is simply setting a substance on fire. But let's look at the extent of energy which is being acquired by combustion or burning or energy used in the process. In burning, the energy is less. low amount of energy is involved. In combustion, there's high extent of energy involved. In burning, there's less energy, and in combustion, a lot of energy is involved. The third difference is that in burning, is usually characterized by production of flame. So whenever you see a flame, something must be burning. But in combustion, you don't have necessarily to see a flame. So this one may be 
or maybe not characterized by flame. And also burning is characterized by characterized by production of light energy may or may not be characterized may not be characterized may or may not produce light as a form of energy now if you look at these four differences then we can put some line between combustion and burning now let's take an example you have a piece of nail and then you want to burn it you place it on a hot charcoal red hot charcoal after some time you'll see the nail becoming red hot what has happened to the nail is that it is absorbing heat that means it's combining with oxygen to give us what is called an oxide of of the iron you can't see a flame on the iron nail but when you have a piece of paper or a piece of wood and then you put it on that red hot charcoal it will catch fire and you'll see a flame so that will give you a dif uh, some difference between a burning process and a combustion process so when you do combustion we are trying to add a particular gas in this case if it is air we are adding oxygen to that particular substance now most substances most substances that combust are carbon in nature and they contain carbon whenever you see these substances for example wood you have petrol you have diesel kerosene the gas used at home with the whatever we whatever we are, we are trying to to burn or whatever to combust like fossil fuels, coal, electricity, all of them contain to some extent some carbon in them. It means that after combustion, what normally comes up, because in combustion we have agreed is the addition of oxygen to the substance. So because combustion is addition of oxygen to substance, then after combustion, the product is supposed to be an oxide of that particular substance. So if it was carbon in nature, then you expect the production of carbon dioxide. I think you have seen a number of items when they are burning, then you see a lot of smoke. Now, that smoke is a sign that is either carbon dioxide or some other gas which is resulting from carbon. Most certain that undergo combustion are carbon in nature. As EG, we can have something like petrol, something like fossil fuel, something like wood, like firewood, something like charcoal, ETC. All these things are carbon in nature. And after combustion, these substances produces carbon dioxide produces carbon dioxide from the word carbon so it means we are adding oxygen to a carbon so if you are talking about a particular substance that contains carbon in nature and then it undergoes combustion then we are adding oxygen to that substance so we have got carbon dioxide now sometimes For example, let me ask you a question. If you have seen a car moving and there's a lot of smoke associated with that particular moving car from the exhaust, what comes to your mind? 
But it's another car that is passing you, you don't see any smoke. Maybe the problem is the engine. You'll say the problem is the engine, but exactly what's really going on. So in terms of combustion, it depends on the supply of the gas you're talking about. So if you combine this fuel plus oxygen, now how much oxygen is available? If there's a lot of oxygen, there's what is called complete combustion. If there is less oxygen, there's incomplete combustion. Now, incomplete combustion is that kind of process where you see there's a lot of smoke coming out from the exhaust of a car. Or if you go to an industrial area, then those big chimneys, you see a lot of smoke coming out. Most probably, there's incomplete combustion. But if there's no smoke from the exhaust of a car, then we call it complete combustion because there's a lot of oxygen. Even at home, in the rural areas where they're using firewood, Sometimes when the firewood is so dry, you might see less smoke. When the firewood is very much wet, you'll see a lot of smoke. Now, you ask yourself, what's the problem? There's what is called incomplete combustion of the fuel and also complete combustion of the fuel. So sometimes the substances we call fuels undergo complete combustion. And sometimes undergo incomplete combustion. So let's try to differentiate between the two. Complete combustion is when there's enough supply of oxygen in the air and again in complete combustion there's less supply less or limited supply of oxygen Let's take an example and see. For example, if you have a carbon and then you want to burn it, combust it, then we are adding carbon plus oxygen. If this oxygen is less in supply, then we'll have a product called carbon monoxide. gas. A good example of carbon monoxide gas is when you are making charcoal. A good number of us have seen the process of making charcoal. We are using wet wood, not dry wood, wet wood, and then you cover it with soil. Now why do we cover it with soil? Because we don't want air or oxygen to go inside that black mound. Now what happens inside there is that the wood will be burning with less supply of oxygen. Now if there was enough supply of oxygen, I do believe the wood will burn completely to ash. Now we don't want the ash, we want the charcoal. So we want to limit the rate of burning or the extent of burning of the, of the wood. So we don't supply enough air or in the process. So when you have less oxygen, there's incomplete combustion. So incomplete combustion of carbon gives us carbon monoxide. Now let's try to see the processes and using some equations. And let's say this oxygen is in less supply, then we'll have carbon monoxide gas. When oxygen is enough supply, then you have got oxygen in excess supply. We call it excess. Then there is complete combustion of carbon, then we'll have carbon dioxide gas. So whenever you see a smoke from the exhaust of a car, remember the car is using fuel, which is petrol. Now inside that process, we have got petrol burning in oxygen to give us that kind of energy to drive the car along. If there is enough, if there is enough oxygen, then there will be complete combustion, production of carbon dioxide. If there is incomplete combustion, then we produce carbon monoxide. Sometimes these processes give us carbon monoxide. 
Now let's try to see burning of other items which are not exactly carbon. burning of candle wax in air. Now, candle wax is carbonic in nature. It's an organic material. And organic materials are made of carbon. So we expect if we, we, we if we Burn candle, we expect some kind of product to be as a form of carbon. Now we have said when carbon burns, we get carbon dioxide. So at the end of the day, we expect if we combust candle, then we expect to get carbon dioxide as one of the one of the products. Now let's have a, sh a small diagram to illustrate the combustion of candle wax in in air and see the products. So let's have our set of operators like this. Now, this is our candle. We light it, then it starts to burn. Now, what we do, we put a funnel directly above it in such a way that the products of burning is supposed to go through the, through the funnel. So as the candle wax is melting, then the products will be going through the delivery tube towards our, our YouTube. Now, because there are gases and we have cold water, cold water acts as a condenser. So it will condense the gases you are coming. Now, at this particular point, we'll have some kind of liquid getting condensed at this area. So we have condensed liquid. The question is now, what is this condensed liquid? Now, some not condense, some passes and goes. Some gases condense and some goes because something is flowing all the way some gases goes and 
gets into the lime water. I do remember in our last session, we talked about, in the, in the Commission of Air, we talked about the use of lime water to test for the presence of carbon dioxide. And you agreed that if you combine lime water with carbon dioxide, then the lime water will change into some milky color, showing the presence of carbon dioxide. Now, if we pass these fumes, gases which are coming from the melting of wax, through this process, then our lime water will be seen turning to a milky color, showing there was some carbon dioxide passing through. So it means that when you burn candle wax, one of the products is carbon dioxide because the lime water changed to milky. At the same time, this condensed liquid which is here, if it is subject to some kind of chemical test, then this liquid turned copper to sulfate and hydrous from white to blue, showing this liquid is water. So it means when you burn also candle wax, then another product apart from carbon dioxide is is water. So candle wax when it burns gives us two particular products, carbon dioxide and water. But because we know candle wax is an organic compound, then it means when organic compounds are combusted, then we get carbon dioxide and water. Burning candle wax produces a colorless liquid which turns white and hydrous. Copper to sulfate into blue, showing it is water. At the same time, it also produces a colorless gas. Colorless gas which turns lime water into milky, showing it is carbon dioxide. So we can have a simple equation and say candle wax plus oxygen will give me water plus carbon dioxide. Water plus carbon dioxide. And normally most organic compounds behave the same, same way. Most organic compounds behave the same same way. For example, petrol is a organic compound. If you burn petrol, we expect to get water, carbon dioxide. We also have got the gas we're using at home for our domestic purposes for cooking. That gas is organic in nature. If you burn it also, you get water and carbon dioxide. Let's see combustion of other substances in air. Or when we talk about air, we talk about oxygen. Now, initially we said by combustion, we are adding oxygen to a particular substance. So if we have a substance, we talk about other substances, then when we do combustion, we are adding only oxygen to that substance, a process called oxidation. So let's see a few examples of combustion. And I also do believe in your study, because you're doing revision, you must have also learned something about chemical equations and formulas. So we can have word equations at the same time, chemical equation formulas then to illustrate these kind of processes. So let's see example. We have got, for example, we have calcium. If you have calcium plus oxygen, then we'll get calcium oxide. Or we can have calcium plus oxygen will give me calcium oxide. 
or you can have magnesium. Plus oxygen will give you magnesium oxide. You can have magnesium plus oxygen will give me magnesium oxide. Or you can have something like aluminium. Plus oxygen is aluminium oxide. With the formulas aluminium plus oxygen will give me aluminium oxide. I don't believe you know how to write the formulas of aluminium oxide. You can, in your revision, you can also learn the same, same formulas. Number four, we can have sodium plus oxygen. This one can give us a number of products. You can have sodium oxide or sodium peroxide. sodium peroxide so generally you can say metals a metal plus oxygen will give us a metal oxide so if you say the metal is M plus O2, then you can have MO. Now the formula here depends on the on the valences. You can have MO, metallic oxide. Now nonmetals also burns or reacts with oxygen in the air to form non-metallic oxides. For example, we can have sulfur. Sulfur plus oxygen gives us sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide. So non-metals plus oxygen, the oxides of the non-metals, and also Metals plus oxygen gives us the oxides of the metals. Now, some assignment for you. When you light your gas in the kitchen and then it is burning maybe you are cooking you don't see any products but you have said one of the products of the combustion of the gas which is organic in nature is carbon dioxide at the same time it also forms water how come you don't see the products now this the water which is formed is in steam it is in vapor form you cannot be able to see it at the same time we also have the carbon dioxide which is also colorless gas now the gas you use at home exactly which gas is that now, if I, I know if I ask a good number of you, you might not be able to tell me which gas is in that cylinder. A good number will tell me it is oryx gas. Some of you are using mehan, will say it's mehan gas. But those particular mehan, oryx, lake, etc., are only the companies making the, the cylinders. But what is inside that cylinder is a particular gas which is organic in nature. It is called natural gas, which sometimes is called methane. So inside that cylinder, we have got natural gas. We don't have oryx. We don't have mehan or lake or whatever. It is natural gas. So if it is methane and you can combust it, then you'll get our main product which is carbon dioxide and water. So we can have methane plus oxygen will give us carbon dioxide plus water. 
or you can have methane is CH4 plus oxygen will give us carbon dioxide plus water. I'm using these equations because I'm trying to believe you have learned some of these, I have to write these equations so you can be able to, to understand. So generally, we have our combustion of substances. Now what we know is if you have got a substance and then you combust it, then you must get some products. Normally if it's organic, it is carbon dioxide and water. If it's another substance like a metal or non-metal, you get the oxides of those substances. Now let's try to look at applications of combustion. applications of combustion where do we apply this combustion in our daily lives now let's try to look at around look around and see where we see combustion taking place let's say we are at home domestic assume you want to cook there's no gas what do you do? There's no combustion. You can't cook. So it means that at home, combustion is highly applicable during cooking. We need fire for us to cook. So you can say for cooking. At the same time at home, I do believe in our homes we have got a lot of rubbish. We sweep the compound and then at the end of the day, we normally burn the stuffs. Now, if there's no combustion, means there's no burning. If there's no burning, then the rubbish will always collect in heaps. So one of the uses or applications of combustion in our, in our homes is of burning wastes. Burning wastes. How about water? Sometimes we have dirty water but you don't have water for drinking and then we say we can boil this water so that we can be able to to make it soft. So if you have hard water at home and then you want to make it soft, then you have to boil the water. Now for you to boil the water, also you need to do combustion. That means you have to have some heat. So also for softening of water. Softening of hard water. How about in the industries? In the industries, do we need combustion? Yes, we need. In the industry, we have got engines, we have got machines that run. For them to run, we need some energy. We need energy and those en that energy is always obtained from combustion processes. For example, steam. Steam run engines in the industries. So for us to have, have steam, then you have to have, we have to combust or you have to heat some water. So we have running of engines in the industries. We also have got motor vehicles. Let's have motor, the motor vehicle industry. Motor vehicles cannot move without burning of fuels. You also have, for example, extraction of metals. Normally, metals are extracted from their ores. We dig or we mine the ores from down there. When they come up, they're in a form that cannot be mine that cannot be extracted. Now what we normally do, we heat or we burn those metals, the, the ores, so that we can be able to obtain their oxides. From the oxide, it is easier to remove the metal from the oxide. So in the extent of industry, we also have application of combustion. Also incineration. Incineration. In the industry, also we also have got a lot of wastes which can be incinerated. Incineration is just trying to burn the rubbish together. Maybe we have got metals, we, don't, we have waste metals, whatever. Now those ones can be burnt. How about at school? Let's say in the laboratory. Laboratory, we need experiments which require combustion, like we're heating 
water, we are heating solutions, etc. We need combustion. But also in the laboratory, we need sterilization. Sterilization of some of the items that we are, we are using in the labs. If not at school, maybe in the hospital, we need sterilization, which we must apply combustion in order to do sterilization of, the, of our machines. Then sometimes, uh, not only these ones are the applications of combustion. When you look around you, you can be able to decide on whatever you see, whether it's application of combustion or not. You can have a number of them. Some, some of our homes, when it's very cold, we just have to light ourselves. Okay, some of us, we use heaters, which is electrical. Some of us at our homes, we have electricity, then you can use heaters to light or to heat ourselves. But when in our rural areas, we don't have electricity, then we use fire, just firewood, just light the firewood or just light the charcoal, then people will getting warm. Everywhere you can see there's a lot of combustion. You can think of any other application that you have around. Now students, until there, we have finished the concept of combustion. At the same time, we looked at some of the reactions of oxygen with particular substances. At the same time, we have also looked at the applications of combustion. Now we'll be taking a short break, and when we come back, we'll be having some questions that will help us to understand better whatever concept we have learned today on combustion and its applications in our daily, daily lives. Welcome back students to the NASA Online. We had a session on combustion, we discussed together. Now the session of discussion is over. I said when I come back, we are going to look at some of the questions. Now we have a number of questions that maybe you have faced or maybe you have been defeated on how to answer. When you answer these questions, I do believe you'll have a good time as you study this subtopic of combustion. Welcome. Our first question is saying, charcoal is made by burning wood when covered with soil. Explain why and suggest a possible byproduct in the process. Now students, when we are talking about combustion, especially in the introduction, we talk about combustion as the combination of a particular substance with oxygen. Now, when you say we are burning wood when covered with soil, what we are trying to do is we are trying to limit the amount of air entering into, into the wood. The question is, why are we doing this? Now, after doing it, what are the byproducts? Now, burning wood in the absence of oxygen will lead to something called incomplete combustion. Remember, we said there's complete combustion and incomplete combustion. Now, incomplete combustion means we will not form carbon dioxide. Remember, we said combustion normally produces carbon dioxide because we're talking about burning of organic compounds. Now, if you burn wood in the absence of air or in limited supply of oxygen, then definitely you are going to get a byproduct, which is carbon monoxide and not carbon dioxide. So why are we trying to limit the amount of oxygen in the, in the burning process? Now when you cover the wood with soil, then wood will not burn completely. Remember, if you are to burn it in an open air, then we'll get ash. Our intention in this question is that we want charcoal, not ash. So you have to limit the rate of burning. So the meaning is it is covered with soil so as to limit the amount of oxygen in order to obtain charcoal. Otherwise, we will obtain ash from the wood. Our second question is asking, standing by the roadside, you see a car pass by, producing a lot of smoke from the exhaust. As a chemist, what do you think is the problem with the car? I do believe in a number of situations we have seen cars moving around. There are some cars that don't produce any smoke, but there are some cars that produce a lot of smoke then your question is, why is this one so smoky? And this one, there's no smoke. Now, smoke that you see from the exhaust is as a result of incomplete combustion of the fuel, which is petrol. So if the engine is not perfect enough, then I do believe you are going to see a lot of smoke. Remember, even at home, when you're cooking dry wood and then a wet wood, the wet wood will always produce a lot of smoke and the dry wood will always not produce any smoke at all. So the smoke is as a result of incomplete combustion of the fuel in the in the vehicle. Question three is saying, in combustion, is combustion exactly the same as burning? Support your answer with concrete reasons. I do believe in the initial stages when you talk about combustion, introduction part, then we differentiate between burning and combustion. Because you know combustion is generally addition of oxygen or a gas to a particular fuel or substance. Burning is setting something on fire. Those two things may be different. Burning is always having less heat, while com combustion is always characterized by a lot of heat energy. You can see burning using light, but in combustion, you don't have to, to see light. If you can review what we have discussed today, then you realize that there are a number of differences, almost five of them. I've just given three as an example. 
Question four is saying most gaseous and liquid fuels like petrol, cooking gas produce less visible products than solid fuels. Explain. Fuel, like the gas used at home, or the petrol in the cars, it is saying they produce less visible products. In the previous questions, we are talking about exhaust of a car producing a lot of smoke. We said this is in complete combustion. But we also, there's a scenario where a vehicle is moving, but you don't see any smoke from the exhaust. And we have also said there, it's because of complete combustion. So we talk about these fuels. They burn completely enough oxygen, and then they don't produce any visible, visible byproduct. If they were to burn in completely, for example, less supply of oxygen, then we'll, pro we'll produce a lot of smoke we can able to see. So the reason is, it is complete combustion of the fuel. Question 6 says, the ignition temperature of substance A, B, C are 125, 250, and 170 degrees centigrade respectively. If, which of the following pairs of substances catches fire at 150 degrees centigrade? Now, we have to compare the ignition temperature of these particular substances. Now, a substance only catch fire if the temperature is, ignition temperature is reached. Now, 150 is the ignition temperature. If you look at A, it's 125. It means that 150 is still too high. That means at 125, A will catch fire. So automatically at 150, A will burn. B is 250. 250 is more than 150. That means B will not catch fire because it reach, the temperature is still too low for it to catch fire. C is 178. If you compare 178 and 150, it means that at 178, C has already caught fire because the ignition is still very low. So in this example, the, the substance which will catch fire at 150 are compounds A and compound C. And the answer is supposed to be C. B will not catch fire because ignition temperature is too high, more than 150. Question 7, which of the following is the most commonly used gas for cooking at home? I want to trust that a good number of you may not be able to answer this question. Now, you go to your kitchen. If you're using gas, try to tell me which gas you are using. A good number of you will go to the kitchen, look at the cylinder there, and then they see it is written oryx, then they think it's oryx gas. Some of you who are using manges gas, you can go there, just look at the cylinder, it's written manges, then you say it is manges gas. Manges, oryx, mihan, lake, these are not gases. These are companies that are manufacturing the gas cylinders. The, the gas which is inside those cylinders is called liquefied petroleum gas or natural gas sometimes call methane so please next time just try to know about the gas which is inside the cylinder is not the name of the cylinder it is liquefied petroleum gas now at this point we come to the end of the session i do believe you'll take your good time during three times then try to do as many questions as possible in this particular subtopic of combustion the number of books if you have four copies then try to go through those copies at the end of the subtopics, we have got a number of questions. Try to solve those questions and see how much. I do believe, until now, we will not have any problem on the subtopic of combustion. It was a good time having you together in this discussion. I've enjoyed your company. I do believe next time we meet, we'll continue with the same kind of spirit. All the best.